Uh, we'll just start out with this basic thing uh, where I can use file input to upload um, anything that I'd like. which is cool, um, but this pull request was asking if we could add a capture attribute to file input um, to enable, what, what was it again, Barrett, to basically enable the front facing camera? Yeah, to enable the camera uh, input. Um, there was already an accepts argument to uh, file input. There was not the um, capture attribute. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, right. So file input has a handful of arguments and accept allows us to upload various different types of files. Is that? Mm -hmm. So we could say accept correct? is image slash star um, so that you can only upload images. You mm -hmm. wouldn't be able to upload a CSV or something like that. I see. So I say accept video image slash star or image slash star. Now, if I run this again, you can do your. Uh, um, I can upload my PNGs, but I can't upload tar -GZs. Any, anything else. Yeah, like PDFs. Cool. Okay. Right. So, and if we actually look at the return value of file input, it's a pretty big complicated HTML tag that's being returned. Um, so there's like an outer div, uh, which is the actual shiny input container that you'll see around a lot of shiny input functions. And that's just kind of a, a class to let the shiny JavaScript know like, hey, this is an input container that has an input value um, that we should send back to the server that that um, you could access in the server code. Um, but, you know, there's all this sort of complicated markup. And then finally, at the end of the day, there's an input tag that is the actual HTML element that enables the file uploading. Um, so essentially, we have this accept argument on file input that gets routed to this accept attribute on the input tag. Um, so we have this kind of general problem with a lot of like shiny input functions where we're basically wrapping HTML tags. And in some cases, you know, you might want to customize certain attributes on particular tags um, on this return value. And we might not sort of out of the box provide you the tools to be able to customize like a very particular attribute on a very particular tag in this return value. So this person was kind of requesting like, hey, there's this capture attribute on um, an HTML input tag that allows you to enable the front facing camera on a mobile phone. So this would allow him to kind of do like a facial recognition thing uh, or allow somebody to like uh, capture a video of themselves and then upload it to a Shiny app. Um, and we've been working hard on tools to basically allow you to more generally take the return value of something like file input and target a very particular, say, HTML elements like the input element um, within this return structure and do something like append an attribute, which is effectively what this user is asking for is, hey, could you add an argument to file input to basically customize the capture attribute on this input tag? Um, so, you know, we're trying to avoid going down this sort of rabbit hole of trying to cover every HTML attribute on every sort of shiny UI function you could imagine. 
and providing better tools for doing this sort of thing where um, this user could, instead of just having the file input here, basically do something like this where um, instead of having, this is the return value where I have this input where it's of type text, class form control, placeholder, read only. And the input above it as well. Yes, this is the actual input that's relevant. Um, good yeah, that's good uh, pointing that out. Um, we can use this tag append attributes, which uh, effectively um, does some CSS selector magic to say within this HTML structure that's being returned by this first argument here, find the first input tag. So it'll go in and find this input tag here and append an attribute of capture user. Um, so that's adding this part here. We could even do, um, because it, it selected actually both input tags, because there's no distinguishing marker, we could do mm -hmm. ID foo on the CSS. Selector. Right, right, right. So on the, um, I, uh, the CSS selector, uh, this, when I just type out input, it's basically going to look for a tag name of input. Um, that's just kind of how CSS selectors work. Um, but there's some special characters that you can add to CSS selectors where I could tack on a um, hashtag or pound sign and then an ID name. So as Barrett pointed out, I could do um, pound sign foo. And that would make sure that instead of the selector matching both input tags, notice how the capture user is only being added to this input with an ID of who instead of this one as well. So yeah, with tag append attributes, this is this is actually a fairly recent feature that we've added to tag append attributes. In the past, you've had to kind of, maybe some of you have already done something like this where um, If you actually look at the structure, like the R representation of this HTML, it's a big mess of complicated list structures that you get back. And there's a very good reason why we do this. It's, you know, by having like an actual formal structure to these HTML tags, it allows us to compose them in interesting ways and do sort of magical things like this tag append attributes. But this is not something you want to work directly with. Um, so like way early on in HTML tools, you might have you know had to do something like uh, X dollar, let me reach into the children of this top level div tag and then look at what's in there. Um, it's a list of three where the first list is a label, the second list is a div that holds the input tag. So let me actually reach into the second child. And I actually want to get into the children of this div. So now I'd have to do this. And now I'm getting closer to getting to this actual input that I want. But uh, now I need to reach into this first item get into the children. So as you can see here, this is not something you want to actually, we, we've, part of what inspired some of this work is we've seen a lot of code out in the ecosystem doing this kind of stuff to do custom UI work. And we wanted to make it a lot less confusing how to do something like this and um, also make your code a lot less brittle to breaking changes that we make to kind of the HTML that we're returning in these functions. So I've had to go out and actually, you know, fix cases like this because we wanted to slightly tweak the actual HTML that we're returning, where this is like making very strong assumptions about the relative ordering of these tags. Um, and 
you know, working with an API that's like not super public and something we don't really want to encourage you to actually be doing. So it's a lot better to like actually reach in and get that subset of HTML that you're looking for and modify it using something like this. Yeah, like placing a needle within the haystack at a very specific location versus rummaging through and going, I, I hope, and then leaving it. <laughs> And so actually what powers this CSS selector argument and um, the ability to kind of like subset down, find a particular subset of this HTML and then modify it is uh, powered underneath the hood by sort of a lower level tool that you can, if you're kind of a power user and need to do something a little bit more sophisticated than something like tag append attributes would provide. We um, also have this API called uh, tag query. And if you've ever used uh, jQuery in JavaScript, this API will look very similar to what you already do with jQuery. Um, so we're not really inventing a new wheel here. We're just kind of borrowing some of the best ideas of what makes jQuery or what made jQuery such a great project. And you can find this article here at um, our studio.github.io slash HTML tools. Um, this is a fairly new website. We only have one article as of now that gets into um, tag query, but hopefully we'll get some more documentation surrounding HTML tools. Um, and if, if you're kind of confused, like if you haven't really heard of HTML tools before, um, HTML tools provides kind of the HTML foundation for Shiny. Um, so when something like file input returns all of this HTML structuring, all of that all of those data structures and that writing of HTML logic is all done by H, this sort of lower level HTML tools package. Um, and you might have never had to do something like library HTML tools before, even if you've written custom HTML, because Shiny re-exports functions from this package. So you might might have written like library Shiny and then like uh, create a custom HTML div or something like that um, because you get those functions when you load Shiny. But um, if you load HTML tools, you'll get some other functions like tag query, um, tag append attributes, some other functions for doing like lower level HTML tool thing or HTML things that, you know, not a whole lot of Shiny apps will be doing. So with tag query, um, the main idea is that you can pass it either a tag object like a div or, you know, equivalently something like the return value of file input. I could pass directly into tag query. And there's kind of two main components to this return structure. One is this, um, it's actually a class with methods. Um, so this is showing you if I called the all tags class, I basically get the return value that I, that I fed into this tag query. Um, so it might not be clear why, I'm, why it's set up this way right now, but eventually we're going to like modify the input value essentially in this tag query. Um, object. And then the other method is this selected tags um, method, which al will um, allow me to do something like if I want to find all the input tags, essentially what we had before with CSS selector equal to input. Um, the equivalent way of doing this with tag query is to say dollar find input. And that is going, it's not going to update the all tags output of this um, tag query object, but it will essentially subset down the selection from being, you know, by default, 
the input that I gave it. Um, and it will update the selected tags to both of the input tags. Um, so now I could do something like chain a call to selected tags. And now I have a list of length two containing both of the input tags that I might want to do something with. And I don't think I can just kind of on a whim um, explain better what tag query actually provides than sort of this vignette. So I do recommend reading through this. Um, but kind of the first portion of this is um, all about this like find method and similar methods like children where find will find It'll traverse essentially all of the descendants of the top level tag and find all occurrences of HTML tags that match the CSS selector that you've given it. Um, so that's why I was able to use find here and it traverses everything and it reaches into like several descendants down into this input tag here. But um, if you wanted to do something like, for some reason, only consider the direct children, which would be this label div and this other div. If I search for children, there's gonna be no selection associated with that. That matches the input, right? Um, but if I wanted to like find, uh, a label tag, there is a direct child label tag here. So that will match on this label. So in the case of an action button, like it's a simple, like one single button tag, which allows us to kind of design this function interface as routing all additional arguments that you might want to provide to this button tag. So that allows you to do things like you know, my action button with an ID of foo, a label here, and that creates this button HTML with an ID, a type, and some default classes to give it like default bootstrap styling. But say I wanna add like a custom inline style of like, I wanna increase the font size to basically two units of line height. Um, you can do something like that with action button because it basically is like doing the lower level tags dollar button um, and providing a style to that directly. Um, since we sort of take the dot, dot, dot and route it directly to the tags button, it's essentially the same interface. Um, so in the case of action button, it's a very thin wrapper where you don't really need um, this sort of ability to you know, take the return value and then modify attributes. You can just do that in one shot directly um, when calling action button. Um, and you can, you know, since these, uh, again, is just kind of taking any sort of input value and feeding it into button. If I wanted to, I could pass another tag object into that and like, I don't know, create, I don't know, just an empty div. Um, oh, actually that's for icon. I think I'd have to explicitly Say icon is no, what is no? Right. Yeah, so that is kind of an unfortunate thing about the way this is set up um, is you would have to make sure like what was happening here is this tags dollar div instead of going into the dot, dot, dot here, since I hadn't specified an icon, it was treating it like the third argument here. Um, but if I wanted to like 
take a tag object and have it run through this dot, 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 I could you know, fully specify those and make sure that it's going through the dot, dot, dot there and then it shows up in my HTML. Again, like the tag query, append attributes, CSS selector stuff isn't super useful for this, but it's more useful in a case where you have like a lot of like a big complicated HTML tag structure and you need to get at a particular subset of that. We did basically just cover, you know, with the tag and tag append attributes, you have the ability to find subsets with this CSS selector and then ability to append attributes. Um, but there's more that you can do um, than just appending attributes. Um, you can also do things like append children. Um, so and you'll notice these other, uh, this other append function also has a CSS selector argument. So you could do a similar thing where, you know, again, here's my file input. If I wanted to say insert um, another div within this input group, I could search for um, a class of input group and append a child tag of just a div. And I'll just give it a class of my custom class. And I should load HTML tools, I guess. Oh, thank you. And now I actually get um, this div of class, my custom class, inserted by default, I guess, um, in as like the last child within this input group tag. So kind of like there's basically two main ways you might want to modify the HTML, either like mess with the attributes um, on the tag or add or remove. Um, tags. So if it's as simple as wanting to like add an attribute or modify an attribute or um, append uh, a single child like this, you can use these sort of higher level tag append child or append attributes. Um, but as some of these examples get into, you can use this tag query to do more sophisticated stuff. Um, and let me try to find an example of. You could do like remove class, add class mm -hmm. uh, with like button success instead of button default. Right. Um, yeah, so. Let's try out tag query with this action button. Um, so by default, this button tag is going to be selected. And as Barrett was saying, um, let me actually save this as an object called BTN. And then when I type dollar, I'll see all of the available methods on this tag query class. Um, so we've already seen stuff like find and children. Um, there's also siblings, parent and parents, and this kind of helps you traverse that tree where say you like went to a particular subset, but then you actually want to go back to a parent or find a sibling uh, tag. You can use, use those methods. Um, but he was mentioning Maybe I want to, for some reason, take off this BTN default class. 
I could do something like remove this BTN default class. And this will actually modify um, the BTN object. And we do that for performance reasons. That's, that's why this is kind of like, even like a lower level developer, kind of more, more developer facing tool than this API, um, where it's not modifying the input object here. It's giving you basically a copy of that input value as its return value. Um, whereas using tag query more directly like this actually will modify um, the input tags that you give it. Um, so yeah, so now I've removed BTN defaults and now I could add a class of uh, say BTN success and now it's appended to the end here. And maybe to make this a little bit more motivating, I'll just show you what this something like this would actually do. Um, where that is interesting. I thought by default, actually, it was going to come up as a blue. Um, color. Um, but that is only going to come up as a blue color if I add a class of BTN um, primary. And that is a bootstrap specific thing where, again, this is kind of like a hard to discover sort of feature where Shiny comes with bootstrap. And bootstrap has these sort of semantic CSS classes where uh, this BTN and BTN defaults like gives that default sort of white coloring with a border around it based on Bootstrap's defaults. But if you add an additional BTN primary class, that will give it this sort of blue background and border color that makes it kind of pop out. Um, So once you're kind of aware of those kind of things and like more familiar with how like Bootstrap works or if you're using some other framework with Shiny, um, knowing about these kind of tricks to like add or remove classes um, from the return value will help you kind of be able to leverage kind of the scaffolding or the high level like widgets that shiny provides to you but also be able to do like some more custom theming things with it 